2022 has only just started, but Attack on Titan is rumbling the current world in every way possible. Everywhere I go, I hear someone talking about it or watching it, and it's really interesting to watch what a cultural phenomenon the series is. But for people like me that have read the manga, we're sitting here grimly waiting for the ending. We know it will split the entire anime community if it stays the same, with some despising it or some loving it. But weirdly enough, one of the most popular current topics is will the anime's ending be different? It is no mystery that a lot of manga readers, myself included, hated the ending of the manga. The series is absolutely 10 out of 10, I kid you not, peak fiction until the last five chapters of the series. After its final chapter, the manga fell out of the top 50 on nearly every statistic website. Its top reviews are insanely poor and usually 1 out of 10s, and the ending was so bad to some that it's inspired a myriad of fan-made endings that fit so much better to the overall story and themes, such as Attack on Titan's Requiem story. Due to the disdain for the ending, discussion about an anime original ending has been popping up more and more across the community, as the ending grows ever more close, and the ideas being shared are pretty interesting. So will there be an anime original ending? While I'm not completely sold on the idea, I actually do believe it's very possible, really, really possible actually. To figure out why I believe this, we're going to have to talk about a lot of things, such as the Lost Girl manga and anime episodes, timelines and multiverses, and both the anime and manga for Attack on Titan. This might sound like it's going to be a crackhead theory to a lot of you guys, but please just bear with me because it actually makes a lot of sense, which to me is really concerning but also cool at the same time. Naturally, of course, this video is going to have spoilers for the manga, so if the ending isn't different and you haven't read the manga, You've been warned in advance. Now is your time to get out of here. The concept of multiverses is surprisingly one that is growing more popular in pop culture as of late. For those that don't know what that is, a multiverse is the idea that there are multiple universes instead of one, and each one has ideas that are intertwined or overlap. A good example is Spider-Man's recent No Way Home, where the villains in the story appear from alternate universes where Tom Holland wasn't Spider-Man for them, and they instead were from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire and Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Attack on Titan obviously has shenanigans with time travel and manipulation of the timeline, as is, with Aaron being the sole cause for nearly, if not everything that's happening in the series. He is the one that led Aaron Kruger to his father since he name dropped Mikasa and Armin when he wouldn't know about them. He is the one that made his dad kill Frida Reese and that entire family and get the founding titan. He is the one that set all of this into motion and for some reason led that one titan to kill his mom. I don't know why he did this. I really hope this changes <laughs> because it's kind of dumb, but not the point. He crafted a perfect closed time loop where a certain series of events would always happen to lead him to activating the founding titan and causing the rumbling. A lot of this seemed very cut and dry until something unusual happened when Ezekiel and Eren entered the paths in the anime, something that actually changes a lot in terms of perspective. Two characters thought to not be canon appear. For those that aren't aware of what I'm talking about, these characters are what the community have nicknamed Nerd Armin and Goth Mikasa. These characters are from the Attack on School casts, which is a series of fake previews created by Isayama. What I mean by fake previews is that instead of foreshadowing what the next chapter could be about, he would instead fill the previews with his miniseries of his. It would be full of meta commentary on the story, jokes or references to pop culture, and stuff of that nature. But why, you might ask? Why does this matter at all? The reason this matters is because Attack on School takes place during modern day Japan, and was thought to not be canon in the slightest. The paths act as a connecting point for a variety of things, and them appearing in a flood of memories through the paths means that they are canon to the anime's story. A viewer might say that this was just an easter egg by MAPPA meant to be there for those that read the manga and saw the fake previews. But that is where you would be wrong, my friend. I decided to go back and read this chapter again, and see what happens in this scene exactly and what I found solidified my beliefs further. Alongside of all of Eren's memories and the paths, in the very top left-hand corner of one of the pages, are none other than Nerd Armin 
and Goth Mikasa. So, not only do they appear in the paths in the anime, but they appear in the manga as well. Not only this, but Isayama in an interview when asked about casts, said that, quote, If possible, I want to draw something that is linked to the original manga's universe. That's how I'm approaching it now, end quote. This, I believe, is confirming that there is a multiverse, a series of differing timelines with these same characters. Otherwise, there is no reason to put these two on the same page as all of our crucial characters and memories, including even Ymir showing up before she even officially is revealed. This is when I really started to think about how timelines work in Attack on Titan, and it started an interesting thought train. Chapter 138 of the manga features an interesting scene with Mikasa, where she wishes to go back home, and goes to a reality where Eren and Mikasa ran away from parody and started a life of their own. This chapter to me has always been a bit of a mystery, because I've always wondered what this vision of hers is. Initially, I thought it was probably just a vision given for her to see so that she could come to terms with killing Eren, but there is one big issue with that thought process. Ackermans, canonically, can't have their memories altered by the founding titan. So for the longest time, I found myself slamming my head against a wall, trying to figure out what this scene could mean, since it is the reason Mikasa knew where Eren was to kill him, and it directly leads into chapter 1 of the manga. But that's when it hit me. If the multiverse does exist, then this most definitely is one of the other timelines. So now we know that a multiverse exists, but what purpose does Mikasa serve? She clearly serves a much greater purpose than we think she does. But how? I decided to retrace my steps, and reread, and rewatch as much as I could about the series. And that's when on both rewatch and reread of Lost Girls, everything made sense to me. I'll need to talk about both of them individually because while they do mostly contain these same contents, the beginning and endings are both different in the manga and in the anime. Allow me to explain. In the Lost Girls manga, Mikasa has just received the news from Armin all the way back in Season 1 about Eren being eaten by a titan. She goes into that fit of rage and then runs out of gas and falls onto a pavilion. And a butterfly flies in front of her which triggers memories from another timeline. In this timeline, Mikasa's parents were never killed and she lives separately from Eren. There are things that overlap, such as the bandits that originally killed Mikasa's parents dying, and Eren getting into a fight with someone when the survey corpse returned. Eren also gave his scarf to Mikasa and they said the same lines that they do in the regular timeline as well. There are two things that stand out heavily in the manga, which is the symbolism with butterflies and the knowledge that there is a greater power that will kill Eren. The butterfly is very important, because it in itself is a massive confirmation that there is some form of timeline manipulation at play here. The butterfly effect is a theory that in a timeline, one small change can lead to a very huge difference down the line. Until Dawn is a good example of this, which is a video game where your actions trigger a butterfly effect of who lives and dies in the story. Isayama himself has confirmed in a blog post that he was inspired from Life is Strange, where in this game, the main character rewinds time and learns that her every choice affects the world around her. Butterflies are very present in its story, and this seems to have been translated into Attack on Titan, some of which I'll touch on later, but they are definitely prevalent in Lost Girls. The greater power that will kill Eren remains ambiguous throughout the chapters, but Mikasa knows about it. She knows somehow Eren will die, and even Grisha agrees with her that this is the case, and is probably the cause for his rage and anger in every timeline. Her illusions of this world begin to shatter by a mysterious man called the Mirror Man, who convinces her to attempt to kill him so she can return back to her regular timeline. He tells her that she wandered here, which is fine, but she stayed for too long, and that it's time for her to go back to where she came from. She also meets Armin, who despite never meeting him before, knew exactly who he was. Who the Mirror Man is, is one of the biggest mysteries to me. I have no idea in the slightest who this could be, but he seems to know who Mikasa is, he seems to know about the timelines, and it's due to him that Mikasa is able to return back to the main timeline of Attack on Titan. And something I didn't even realize in Lost Girls is that there is a scene that feels like it directly is supposed to mirror the rumbling, 
where suddenly everything starts shaking like mad and everybody goes into a panic and everything is rumbling like crazy. I looked over this until I was editing this video and then I realized that this is probably supposed to be this world's version of the rumbling. In the anime OVA for Lost Girls, Migasa is with Eren after they had just patched up the wall in Season 3 Part 2 with Eren's hardening abilities. The Executioner from Hell is killing Titans, while Migasa is wondering what they will do after they secure all the walls and go out past them. For some reason, she thinks that Eren will leave them all behind one day, which then leads into a scene of a butterfly flying in front of her. Mikasa knowing Eren will leave is interesting, because that is exactly what he does in the future. He leaves them to go to Marley, and then after that always leaves them in the dust to do all types of other things. I don't think it's a coincidence that it's this thought process that triggers her to jump down to another timeline, where she is following a butterfly that is brown. This might seem like a really minor detail, the, the butterfly's color, but get this. This is not the first time this butterfly has appeared. No, my friends. This butterfly is also the same exact one that is at the end of the opening in the current season. A butterfly that was in Lost Girls is in Attack on Titan's opening for the final season. That's huge. And to even further my point, this same butterfly is present in one of the episodes. During episode 4 of the final season, while Zeke and Eren are going through Grisha's memories, baby Eren is chasing the same butterfly from Lost Girls, and the opening that no one else, including Grisha, seemed to even notice or acknowledge is there. This is extremely important, because this same butterfly is not present at all in the manga, which means its placement in the anime is intentional or it was requested by Isayama to be put in. This inclusion, in fact, I believe directly connects Lost Girls to Attack on Titan's mainline story. Some might try to brush Lost Girls under the rug and claim it as non-canon, but there is another interaction that makes the series too hard to ignore. Mikasa finds Annie's ring in the 10th chapter and knows it's for a grim purpose, but isn't sure what that purpose entails. It's because of her finding it in Lost Girls that she instantly recognizes the ring when Annie pulls it out in the main story. So this is extremely hard to ignore since its actions directly have already impacted the main story in some kind of way. The dots are starting to get connected like they've never been before. So to recap, we have confirmed that there are multiple timelines that exist in Attack on Titan series. There is casts, which we can confirm exist due to appearing in both the anime and manga versions of the paths, and there is a universe where Mikasa's parents don't die. And with this, we can gather that Mikasa's vision from 138 was also likely an alternate reality. Why do these all come together and make sense? The answer to that is actually quite simple, and has been right in front of us the whole time. The key to traversing the timelines is Mikasa. This might sound like a bizarre claim to some, which don't get me wrong, even this at first sounded insane to me, but if you really start to think about it, it makes sense. Too much sense, actually. In the final chapter of the series, Mikasa was revealed to be the one to set everything into motion. Ymir chose her to be the one to set her free from her agony, and she was the sole reason for all of this happening. To see what she would do, and what her actions would be. This thought train becomes even more interesting when you start to consider what Mikasa's headaches could mean. They have always been present in the story during very crucial moments of its plot, and she has the most frequent and relevant headaches during chapter 138 before her vision. I believe her headaches are almost like checkpoint markers, where she sees things from other timelines. That is why her headaches always occur during the most important parts of the story, because they're checkpoints. Whether these events are changing, or whether they're staying the same, we don't really know. But I think it's safe to say that these headaches relate to her ability to seemingly jump throughout timelines or create her own realities, and to further Mikasa being the key. In Lost Girls, the butterflies tell her that if she doesn't like this reality, she can start again from zero. She can choose the world, and in that world everything will be how she wants. However, no matter what, Eren will die. The paths work in very mysterious ways, so although I'm not able to explain exactly how Migisa jumps through timelines, I can pinpoint where she does and the effects of her doing so. Alright, 
So we've established that Mikasa is the key to the timelines and multiverse at work in this series. Butterflies are an important motif that appear a myriad of times through the series. Lost Girls establishes this as well as Mikasa's ability to leap, and Attack on Titan casts is relevant to the main story. These are all important and relevant to the main purpose of me making this video, which now that we've established everything we need to, I can present to you what this video is about. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binaries, I believe that Attack on Titan has three main timelines. Allow me to explain what I mean and what these three timelines are. Now in the first timeline, we had no idea what it could be until chapter 138, when Mikasa had the vision of her and Eren at the log cabin. This right here, I believe to be the first timeline. In this world, the majority of the events probably happened in the same manner. However, Mikasa told Eren the truth about how she felt about him, and they ran away together to go and live peacefully. Here, Eren died due to the curse of Ymir, and Mikasa said, see you later, Eren. Which is where Eren woke up from in chapter one of the manga. We never get to see this timeline besides Eren's dream in chapter 1 and Mikasa's vision in chapter 138, but both are from the original timeline. Think of this timeline as the neutral ending, where Eren and Mikasa are able to live happily together, but the rest of the world goes to suffer and goes to war. One side wins while the other loses. Eren wakes up in chapter 1 into the second timeline, which is the entirety of the manga where the events play out in a similar manner. However, the timelines diverge drastically because Mikasa does not tell Eren the truth, and this leads him down the path of war, killing and activating the Founder. The end result is Mikasa killing Eren after he suffers tremendously on his own. Think of this timeline as the bad ending, where more than half the world dies, Eren is killed, and Paradis has an inevitable future of war. This directly leads into the first episode of the anime, where Eren wakes up from a different dream, that's a nightmare, and in a very panicked state. The beginning of both of these are very different and distinguishable start points. In the manga, he sees Mikasa peacefully bidding him farewell, and wakes up calmly. In the anime, he sees chaos, death, titans, and his mom dying, and he wakes up in a panicked state. One is a peaceful dream, while the other is a nightmare. I don't think it's a coincidence that these are very drastically different. The anime timeline is the third timeline that matters, and likely is the final one. Some of you viewers might think that I'm crazy for thinking this way, but the anime actually has some pretty notable differences from the manga. For example, the dream in the anime is much different, and so is Eren's reaction. Annie laughs hysterically when she's confronted about being the female titan, where in the manga, all she simply does is grin. The entire sequence with the berserk titan never happened at all in the manga, and instead of going ape shit. Eren simply got his shit kicked in. <laughs> so the Berserk Titan was entirely original, and what makes it more interesting is what Eren says in this scene. All these things are things that he says and thinks currently. So this makes me think that this inclusion was again, not a coincidence. The key to the basement is an entirely different key in both the anime and the manga, and Mikasa's scarf is a different color too. In the manga, it's black, while in the anime, it's red. Now this one is actually pretty important, because when Eren goes through the paths in the anime, he sees Mikasa in a black scarf as a child, which she has never had a black scarf in the Attack on Titan anime. At first, I thought maybe it was just the filter that was going on, but then I went and looked at the trailer for this, and it's black in the trailer as well. So this was a deliberate change. We also have Falco making strange references to remember being a scout, and the butterfly was put in Grisha's memories when it was not there previously. So the anime has a pretty significant amount of differences, while still making sure it hits all the key points that need to happen so far in each timeline, such as the bandits dying. It's with all these differences and the notion that there are likely multiple different timelines present in the series that I believe the anime will have a different ending than the manga. This is why the butterfly at the end of the opening is crushed. This will be the end of the cycle of hatred. The final timeline. We had the neutral ending, which was the see you later timeline, and we had the bad ending, which was the manga. Now we are getting the true ending, which is the anime. This is all on top of the fact that Isayama has publicly admitted in interviews that he regrets ending the series the way that he did, 
because he doesn't feel he was able to convey the themes of the story correctly. With that, everything we've discussed in this video seems to suggest that there is a strong possibility of there being an anime original ending. What that ending is, none of us can tell for certain, but if I were to guess, I believe Eren will still die in the anime. The rule established in Lost Girls and through the various timelines is that there is a great power in the world that will make certain things happen, such as the bandits dying, but this same power will always lead to Eren's death. Keep in mind that this is all a theory though. Everything I've said in this video could either have been major hopium or complete craziness. I just saw the lines to a lot of things connect, and I figured I would try and connect them all. Maybe you guys agree with me, and maybe you have your own thoughts about what the ending might be. If you do, be sure to share them down below because I'd love to know what you guys think of this video. But that about does it for me. I'll see you guys later. Until next time.